Hi guys, how we doing? So today we're going to be learning how to read water and find fish on small creeks. These are going to be the creeks that the Tiny 10 and Tiny 10 2 were designed for. And to begin, uh, a couple things you're going to need in order to effectively do this are some polarized sunglasses that will help you look down into the water and be able to see fish. Um, and then a hat with a brim, that way it would keep the sun out of your eyes and help you see um, things a little bit more easily as well. Okay, so let's head down to the water and I'll start pointing out just some basic things that you can look for, um, kind of basic situations where you should expect to find fish. Okay, so we're down by the stream now and I'm, you might not be able to see it, but you can definitely hear it. And so just a rule of thumb of when you're approaching a stream, realize that trout, they always face um, upstream or wherever against the current. So when you're going to look for trout, if you're just starting to do this, it generally helps if you approach from downstream and you work your way up. That way you're coming up the back of the trout and they're looking away from you. And then that way if you're, especially on a really heavily trafficked stream or creek, like say one right next to a really busy hiking trail, those fish will be very skittish. And so if you're in that situation, you definitely want to come up from downstream and that way you'll have a little bit of a better chance of not spooking the fish, be able to see them, ultimately throw a fly at them and catch them. Okay, so here we are in a classic little pool that will develop on the stream. And when you guys are come across a pool like this, this is a great place to find fish. For example, we've got one in the back of the pool there. And then there is another one. I'm not sure if you can see him, but he's right in there. So these pools offer a great, um, really great place to find trout. And what you're looking for is they're never going to really be in this white water here. Um, they're going to be off behind it in this stiller, slower water, as we can see, like right there and in the back of the pool. Um, that way they can see fish, or excuse me, they can see bugs coming, um, and then that way they can go and eat them. So when you're looking, you generally want to be looking towards the back of the pool like that, along and along the sides. Um, that way there's a lot of that still slower water and the fish have a lot of time with which to see a bug and then go and get it. Especially towards the back of the pool, see how it drains off there and another waterfall? Um, generally they'll, they'll hang out right in front of those rocks because it creates this kind of like, um, it's a bubble with all the water pushing up against um, those rocks. It actually creates a little bubble of still water right in front of those rocks. And a lot of times you'll find fish hanging out right in front of those rocks um, at the back end of the pool. So that's generally when you come across a big pool like this, that's where you want to look, is along the sides, uh, definitely towards the back, um, and always in the stiller, slower water. Okay, so now we are just below where that big pool emptied out, and now we're on a nice little section of this stream. And so, of course, now you're looking for pools about this size here, um, and again, towards the sides, the back, um, of these pools, these little smaller pools in here. Now when you see a section like this, that's all pretty fast moving water. There's not a lot of uh, pockets of still water in which for fish to hang out. So this is probably not your best bet when it comes to finding fish. However, if you still wanted to get up here and fish a section like this, um, up against the banks are really good places to look um, as that's where there's generally some undercuts that they get a little bit deeper and fish will hang out there in the privacy, so like up against the banks, kind of like that. Also, there's small little eddies that will create little tiny pools on the pockets of these creeks. So something like this right in there. See how that water spins in a counterclockwise direction? Sometimes you'll get little fish hanging out in there, um, and you can throw a fly, and that's just enough still water for a little fish to live, and it'll come up and take your fly. Um, but generally throwing it in the middle of the creek section like this, um, not as great for finding fish. However, when we turn down here, um, a little pool like this, and then this nice little stretch down there, there's definitely going to be some fish in there. Okay, so here's a, another great thing to be looking for when you're on a creek looking for some trout. Is when you see an overlaying log or something else, like this that will provide cover for trout, they generally will hide out right underneath a log in there. And so these can be tricky 
Um, sometimes you might want to fish these from upstream and shoot a log underneath, or you shoot the, the fly just right behind the log in there. Um, but stuff that will provide fish cover, they feel safe under there. And there also appears to be quite a deep pool underneath that log. That would generally be a great place in which to find a trout. And another point when looking at a big pool like this, is if you see dark patches of vegetation like that, trout will generally sit on top of those vegetation as they act as camouflage. And so sometimes it's really hard to see where the trout are sitting on top of those things, but generally if you throw a fly over there, someone will come up and eat it. Okay, so here's another great section of stream. As you can see, it's relatively flat. This water's moving pretty slowly. And so when you're looking at a stream like this, great places to look are going to be before and after these rocks, right in front and behind submerged rocks like this. Like I said, when the water's flowing in front of rocks, it'll create this kind of hydro pocket right in front of the rock of still water. Um, and so fish will generally like to hang out there. And then, of course, right behind a rock is also nice still water for a fish to hang out. Um, in this pool, there are always going to be fish towards the end of the pool. So as you can see, there's one guy right in there who's moving around. And they generally like to hang out in the pool because they've got a long time to see bugs coming at them off the top of the water. Because we can see this guy pretty clearly, when you're looking for what a trout looks like, right, they generally have that shape where it's a little uh, wider at near where their head is, right, and skinnier to where their tail is. And if you can't tell if it's just a stick or a rock, they generally move around quite a bit. And you will see them move laterally across the stream bed um, while always um, still facing upstream. And that's a great way to tell. If you can't quite tell if it's a fish or a stick or a rock, just watch for that movement laterally across the stream bed as they scan for bugs. And that's how you can generally tell if it's a trout versus just some other oblong feature. Okay, so here is another great thing to look for. So here we've got, right, this little current, and what it does is it pushes water up into this pocket, and then there's a nice deep undercut on the bank. And that what happens is so all the bugs that end up in this stream, they get pushed right into there. And that is a great thing to look for. Generally, you'll have trout hanging out in pocket water like that where they're, they're, they're getting nice oxygenated water, there, all the bugs are being pushed in there, and they've got cover. So when in doubt, this is a great thing to look for as well. Okay, so here we are at another pool. And as you can see, there's a fish right in there. He's uh, moving around, feeding, seeing dogs. Okay, so the reason I think that trout is there is this. It's one, right, like we've said, a bunch of slow water for him to look at all the bugs coming off of this and going right in front of him like that. Two, Fish need oxygen. All this, all that white water, all those bubbles, that's nice oxygenated water so that fish can sit there and breathe nice and easy. And he's surrounded by, I, I'm not sure if you can see it quite well, but there's some underwater rocks around him and sticks. And so he kind of blends in and he's not standing out. Often you'll find trout sitting right there. You won't sit him really finding back on this really shallow, open, gravelly parts of the stream. Look for him where there's some underground structure going on there, um, and where it's still slow water, though. Okay, so here we are, and there's another trout right there. And he was hanging out between, right, that rock, that rock, and that. There he is again. And as you can see, right, he's hanging out behind some rocks, right off of where this white water is coming off. So he's getting that oxygenated water. He's got cover, and it's pretty slow there, so he's got time to see bugs coming at him. Okay, so I kind of walk you guys through some general uh, stream features that you'll see. Those are going to be big pools, um, and where to find fish on those are going to be on the sides and near the back. Um, we've also talked about sh uh, running stretches of the stream. We're looking for relatively flat, so not a lot of gradient on those streams, so the water will be moving slower, and then as well as eddies on the side of the stream and then undercut banks. Um, in general, keep in mind the most important thing that you're looking for is slow moving water. If you have nice, slower moving water, fish have time to see your fly. They also don't have to burn a lot of energy hanging out in that water. Uh, that's the number one thing you're looking for. So any pocket of slower moving water on a stream like this, 
um, will be the thing that you're looking for. The second two requirements that we're also looking for that also help are covering concealment, whether that be a branch overhanging the stream or uh, some rocks in which the fish will either sit in front of that hydro pocket in front of the rock or behind the rock, um, as well as dark patches of kind of decomposing vegetation or leaves on the bottom of the stream that fish will rest on top of and use as camouflage. And then the third thing we're looking for is a source of oxygenated water. That's going to be those white water with the bubbles. Fish love to hang out right behind those because they get nice oxygenated water in which to breathe. So keep those things in mind and I'm sure you guys will have a really good um, luck finding fish on small creeks and then targeting those with your either your tiny 10 or your tiny 10 too. Thanks so much and I hope you guys have a good one.